welcome back! Today we are going to be discussing Second Chance Summer by Morgan Matson. This book is actually the only book that I hadn't read by Morgan Matson yet. I've read all of her other books, I love all of her other books, I loved this book. If you haven't read Morgan Matson, you really, really, really should read Morgan Matson. It's always good. It's always good. I love Morgan Matson. I, I, I love her. That's all. I love her. So, Second Chance Summer is a contemporary book. It takes place over the course of a summer, and it's basically about this girl named Taylor, and her dad is diagnosed with stage 4 pancreatic cancer, and he only has about three months to live. And they decide to spend their last summer together as a family up at their lake house. They're just basically, they want to spend all their time together with their dad and they haven't been to the lake house in a while but they're gonna go up and they're gonna have a good time and enjoy each other before it's too late. She doesn't have any friends there anymore because she hasn't been there for so long and something happened when she was 12 that just made people not really want to be around her and you have to kind of figure it out. But this book is really, really good, really, really touching. It was so good. I wouldn't say it was my favorite Morgan Matson book. I think that still belongs to The Unexpected Everything, but I still really liked it. So you should read this book. It's really good. So that's it for the non-spoilery section. If you haven't read this book, please leave now. Don't spoil yourself. It's too good to spoil. Just go and read it and come back and we will talk about it, okay? Okay, bye! Okay, let's talk about this book. This book, uh, how do I, how do I phrase the expression? It murdered my soul. This was one of the saddest books I've ever read in my entire life life. No exaggeration. I don't cry over books. I'm not a huge book crier. Sometimes I'll tear up, but it definitely won't be crying. But this book had me straight up sobbing, hyperventilating. I couldn't breathe. I was freaking out. I This book was so sad. I would say it's probably the hardest I've ever cried over a book, except for that might go to Allegiant, but I read Allegiant a long time ago so I can't really remember. So it's either the worst or tied with Allegiant because I was freaking out this book made me so sad. But we will talk about that later. Let's, let's get on with the plot. Okay, so I just want to start off with saying Jelsey. Gelsey? I say Jelsey. Jelsey is such a strange name. No offense if that is your name. It's just like, I was like the whole time wondering why her name was Jelsey and then it was explained later as the name of a ballerina. And I was like, oh, well that makes sense. But like, I was like, I was just so confused. I was like, is this supposed to be Kelsey, but like super edgy or something? I don't know. But it, I mean, I was okay with it by the end of the book. I was like, oh, okay, Jelsey, it's a name. The whole time, I was just like, why does everyone hate her? She finds Henry on the dock. She sees Lucy at work. She sees the people she used to know. And everyone is so bitter towards her. And I'm like, what did she do? And everyone's like, you can't just leave again like that. And I'm like, but I thought maybe they were mad because she left for five years and she didn't come back with her family. But that was like a family thing. Like she didn't, and I was like, you can't be mad at her for doing that because it's a whole family thing but no no it turns out to be some whole other issue so I was really confused about that I really wanted to know ends up she was dating Henry and then Lucy liked Henry and then when they confronted her she just ran home and then her dad was leaving and she was like take me with you and he was like okay and just left I mean that's a sucky thing to do but like they were 12. They were literally 12. The whole time, like, that didn't really bother me. Normally I get bothered by stuff like that. I'm like, you're 12? Who cares? But, like, for some reason, it didn't bother me. I don't know why. But, like, really, if you do think about it, they were 12. It, it's not that big of a deal. I understand running away and ditching them would be very annoying. But, like, did they could they not call you? Like, she could have called them. They could have called her. Something could have happened. It could have solved it. Yes, I get it. It's the whole point of the book. There would be no book story plot thing if there wasn't that. So I'm appreciating it. But at the same time, you were 12. So I had a theory about the blonde girl who was always with Henry. I thought it was like 
his stepsister or something because I, I don't know when they were talking about how the mom was really strict I was like well maybe the parents got divorced and now that's his stepsister that's why they get along so well but no just the babysitter I was kind of right about the divorce thing though mother just walked out on them her job was like actually goals because she didn't really have to do anything she kind of just got to hang out with her friends occasionally serve people it could have been boring at first because she didn't really have friends to hang out with and she didn't talk to anyone and she just kind of was like when am I going home like I don't know she just got kind of like paid to do nothing kind of i liked her job i always really like the jobs that people have over the summer like summer jobs i've never had like a summer job summer job i've had a job and then worked over the summer people have specifically summer related jobs i don't know they're always like kind of cool to me i just think that they're nice I would want one. Okay, I really like their summer house just because like it reminded me a lot of when my family would go up to Mammoth, which is in the mountains in California. Um, we'd go up there over the winter, sometimes over the summer, and in the winter it would be snowy and we'd stay in a cabin, and in the summer it would be really hot, we'd stay in a cabin anyway, and we would go hiking and stuff, and it just reminded me that over the summer we got to go up there. It specifically reminded me of last winter when we went up there. We were with my dogs, and I was reading the Mortal Instruments for the first time, and it was just like a good time, and I don't know, it just, it felt really like relatable. I related to this book a lot which is probably why it hit me so hard. I liked how they went up to their summer house. I, I wish I had a summer house. It always sounds like so much fun. Okay I really I really like the scene where Davey comes over and he's just like hey can I walk your dog? Like I don't want you to pay me. I just really want a dog and I really want to walk your dog. That was probably the most relatable scene in the whole entire book because I have two dogs, they're back home, but I really want a dog. And if someone were just to be like, hey, you want to walk my dog? I would totally walk their dog. I would do it like in an instant. I wouldn't even think about it. I just, I really want a dog. I really liked the sleepover scene where Taylor sees her sister and her friend Nora and they're just having a sleepover and they're not really doing things. And she calls Lucy and she's like, they're doing it wrong. And Lucy's like, how wrong and they go over and they have this sleepover together and it's just really cute it's like the moment where Lucy kind of starts to forgive Taylor for what she's done and they start to become friends again and they remember all the stuff they used to do when they were little I liked that scene it was really cute and it was nice to like have Jelsea finally have a friend never really had friends before and she finally has like a best friend they're hanging out all the time and it was like kind of like how Taylor had her best friend and it was like really cute I thought that was a good scene I really like Taylor and Lucy's friendship I really just like how they got along normally in Morgan Madsen books you're kind of focused on how she's getting to know this guy but the whole time I was actually more focused on her friendship with Lucy which is kind of rare. This Morgan Matson book specifically was very different from her other books. Very very different but in a good way I guess. I was so focused on her becoming friends with Lucy again like that was the most important part of the book to me. I just really really wanted to get to know Lucy's character. I wanted them to be friends again. I've always really liked how well written friendships are in her books. They just, they're so close. Like if you've read Since You've Been Gone, like Emily and Sloane, they're just like their best friends. Like they just, they get each other. They always do things together. And I just really like that. So I wanted to get to know Lucy better. I was gonna be really sad if she ended up not even being friends with her, but she did, which was really good because I, I really liked Lucy. She was definitely one of the favorite characters. Oh my gosh, okay. <laughs> The scene where they're, they've been trying to spend more time together and so the gardeners next door, gardeners being the family, not actual gardeners, when they come over and they have them act out like scenes from their screenwriting stuff and I just really like that scene because Taylor is just like super into it and then Warren is just like monotonous and just like so bad at acting, doesn't understand, and then her mom keeps like butting in being like, wow, good writing, or like, wow, commentary. I thought that was so funny. I was laughing so hard. I just, I really, really 
love that scene. I loved how Warren just like wasn't into it at all versus Taylor and her mom were so into it. It was amazing. I really liked it. Okay, so finally the main part of the book. This book was really, really relatable to me. Normally, I don't relate too much to the characters in books. Like, I relate, but I'm not, like, super attached to them. Like, yeah, that's me. But this book was literally me. I know, like, it sounds kind of weird. Taylor is a middle child. I'm a middle child. And she's always jealous of how her little sister is, like, super good at something. And Warren is super good at something. They know what they want to do. And she's just, like... I don't know what I want to do. That's me. Like, she doesn't get along with her mom as well as her dad. Her dad is just like this pun-loving, silly, blue-eyed, fun guy. And I love when they hung out and they got breakfast together and they do all these things together. And like, that is me with my dad. I just... I love my dad so much. When I started this book, I didn't think I was gonna be that sad about it. But then when I had gotten to the end and he died, I wasn't even that sad about it. But we got to this one line. There's this one line and this is when I started crying. Like I was doing fine, but then I read this line and it says, and as I looked at his closed eyes, I realized that I would never see his eyes again that he would never look at me again, that he was dead. And just, it made me think about how if my dad had died, I would never see his eyes again, and I'd never be able to see him again. And it just, I I, don't, I just started freaking out. I, just, I couldn't handle it. I just, I, I just, it, like, it, it was too, like, cause it, the, her dad was so much like my dad. Like, my dad is so silly, and he loves puns, and he has the blue eyes, and when I just thought about she never gets to see his blue eyes again, and I never get to see my dad's blue eyes again, I just started crying, and it just, it was like too much for me, and I ended up crying through the rest of the book. It was so sad, and this little, his gravestone that says the defense rests on it, and she names her house sign oh after him because she misses him so much in the letters and I just I really I really 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 like this book I didn't think that the ending was gonna hurt me so badly but it did and I ended up sobbing like hysterically and I I was freaking out and I ended up actually calling my dad and talking to him because I I just I Oh, I'm so, I'm trying so hard not to cry right now. I just can't imagine and I didn't want to imagine what it would be like if my dad was gone. I could never ever imagine having my dad die. Just, I could, I could not live without my dad. I just, I can't. And so I hauled him and I was crying for a really long time and like, the thing about me crying is like I get the expression where it's like you can feel the pain in your bones when you're crying and the sadness because when I cry, I, my bones like actually ache. I get really, really sore from crying. My face actually just goes numb. I don't know why this happens. My legs got so sore. I couldn't sleep because my legs are so sore from crying, which sounds really, really weird, but like my bones ache just a ton when I cry. I don't know why they just do it. And it hurts so bad just reading this book, but it was so good and I, really liked it. It was so weird to read a Morgan Matson book that made me cry because all of her books were so feel good. I read this book on Valentine's Day because I was like, oh, I really want a cute Morgan Matson book to read and it's it'll be a good time for Valentine's Day. No, it was not. I cried so much. It was so good though. I, just, I can't imagine what it would be like if my dad was gone. Okay. Okay! So those are all my thoughts on this book. It was really, really good. If you've read this book, I hope you liked it. Oh, this book killed me. It really, it like jacked me up real bad, but in a good way, if that makes any sense. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you've read this book, leave a comment down below telling me if you liked it or you didn't, your favorite scene, anything. 
you want to share. I really like this book. Thank you so much, and I will see you soon with another video. Bye!